Hello, welcome to day three of the Color Boot Camp. I hope most of you are back with me. I'm going to give it a minute until some people can join before I get started. Logging on on my phone so that I make sure I can see your comments. Hi, Lydia. The first comment that I saw. Welcome. Hi, Christy. So just giving in a minute, there's nothing worse than coming in the middle of a conversation, letting people log on. I'm wearing my post-it note pink today. I was such a grumpy pants today. I had one of those days where just nothing was going right. Um, I had an appointment to get my hair done and my gray is in. So I was very excited. I prepared my hair last night. I did a Malibu treatment, got all the yucky stuff off, had it all prepared to get fresh color and looked so forward to it. And then my husband said, there's a tornado warning. Do you really need your hair done? I'm like, hmm, depends on when you ask me. I kind of really want to go. Is it really that big of a deal? And he's like, yeah, it's a big deal. It's a tornado. So I had to cancel my hair appointment and then I was whining and having a pity party over that all day. And then I've been looking forward to this event on Saturday night. I originally had a ticket for it and my dad passed away. So I called the venue and I said, can I please come to another one? They had two different dates. I really don't want to miss it. And they were like, sure, you can come. You know, the next one is on this coming Saturday. So I had it in my calendar. And every time I looked in my calendar, I was like, oh, I forgot about that. I'm so excited. Called the place today and said, hey, I'm just RSVPing. I want to make sure you know I'm coming. And they were like, oh, OK, yeah, that, that sounds good. And then later in the day, I got an email that it is, in fact, canceled because I am the only one that RSVP'd and is coming. So just one of those days. And then a doctor that I've been waiting to get in with since June. I had an appointment for November 22nd, and they called to say that they're pushing my appointment back to January 3rd. So not a good day. So the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I put this shirt on because you can't help but feel cheery, awake, alive, and happy when you're wearing this bright of a color. So color affects us emotionally, for sure. Did you ever, you know, you just run out of the house to run an errand and you look your absolute worst, and then you run into somebody that you're like, of course I look my worst when I see them. I always look my worst when I see them. So there's a difference between looking and feeling your best and knowing that you look like crap. So color plays into that. And the the effect that we have on our clients by what we're wearing, how our hair looks, how our makeup looks, how our breath smells, how our hands smell. If you're a smoker, you have to be aware that your hands are going to smell like cigarettes when you're done smoking a cigarette. You have to be conscious of all these things. These are all part of what we do behind the chair. I'm here to help you improve your hair color skills, but I'm also someone who's owned a salon for 33 years and 35 years behind the chair as an actual stylist doing the, the things and maintaining a clientele. So it's the whole package. You know, you can know hair color inside and out and you can be the best colorist on planet earth. But if your clients come in and your hair is, you know, a mess, you have bobby pins all over and there's holes in your shoes and you don't have makeup on and your nail polish is all chipped or you're just looking like you just rolled out of bed, that's going to bring your client down immediately. You know, whether we like it or not, we're judged in the first 15 seconds that people see us. Um, and there's, there's definitely a palpable energy that we bring to the visit. So be aware of that. And when you're having a day like I had today, just put on your posted pink shirt and feel better instantly. And having you guys comment and being here, there's 32 of you right now live. This brings me back into focus and to appreciate what I'm doing, what my purpose is, and who cares about all those other things, right? So put a number into the comments and let me know, is this your first um, time being here live for this boot camp? Is this your second session or have you attended all three? The reason I'm asking is because I like to be prepared for the masterclass that I'm inviting you all to, to make sure that you've understood everything we talked about so far so that I can take it to the next level. So 
One, if you've only came to one live, two, if you showed up for two live, and three, if you're here tonight and it's your third time. Seeing lots of threes, that makes me so happy. I see a couple ones. Ones, make sure you go back and watch the videos. I've, I've had, I can't tell you how many people reached out and said, how do I get a hold of the replays? Guys, they're right here. They're right on this page. All you have to do is scroll down. Go back to this page, Hair Color Secrets Insider, three-day boot camp. Scroll down. And tonight's lesson is, you know, um, posted pink. Um, the last one, I believe I had black on. And the one before that was like a royal blue. So you'll see the video and you can watch them anytime. Okay, awesome. Somebody said one and watch the others. So it's important because with anything in, in education, it's foundational and it's building blocks. So something that I said in session one, there is a certain assumption because we're only here for an hour that you know and understand what you heard in session one. So there's nothing worse than getting to the final masterclass and me saying something that's assumed and you saying, what the heck is she talking about? Because then it's all going to go over your head. And the masterclass is your opportunity. I'm doing something very new and unique this year where I'm going to do the masterclass the way that I do my live coaching sessions with my membership, where I'll be able to see all of you in the gallery and I'll be able to pin you and bring you up to, to talk to me face to face and ask a question. Um, normally, we have so many people in the master classes that we do them as more of a webinar where you can only comment your questions. But I've gotten more and more comfortable doing the ones with the gallery. And as long as everybody behaves themselves and doesn't unmute in the middle of it, I think it'll be um, a much more fun master class. So, so let's get started. It looks like a lot of um, threes and the only ones said that they went back and watched it. So that's good news. So welcome back. Thank you for spending your time with me. Um, we talked about brassy hair in session one, how to avoid it, how to fix it properly. Session two, we talked about fillers and taking hair from light back to dark. Um, tonight, I wanted to talk about full on corrections where the client shows up, you know, we, we get the phone call. I'm feeling a little bit dull and I want I want to go a little bit lighter. And then they come in and it's, you know, box, box brown three times and she wants to go this blonde. You know, they, they tend to be not very forthcoming with the information when they sign up for the appointment and then we're stuck in a situation. So I highly recommend, especially since COVID, we've stuck with the virtual consultation because it's a time saver, right? You can do a virtual consultation in your car, when you're picking your kids up from school, from your phone, like you can do it anywhere where you're not taking time from a paying client to block off a full half hour appointment for a consultation. So I would still continue doing those. Um, I think it's important to see what you're dealing with and have that visual. So um, when someone, you know, calls in and, and makes a corrective appointment or you've done the the uh, virtual thing and you know what you're dealing with, a lot of times our initial reaction is, oh crap, the sweat bead starts trickling down the center of your back. You get immediately very hot, especially my age, hot flash. You're like, oh my God, this is so much more than I anticipated. But you're trying to keep your cool and you're trying to appear more confident than you are. And I heard something today, I, I listened in on a training because like I said, I was having a pity party and I was like, I need some motivation. And I have this coach that there's like a ton of videos where if, if I need to pick me up, that's the place to go. And they were talking about um, an acronym for ANTS, A-N-T-S, like the little ant bug. So when we see a situation that looks super complicated, we immediately, the ants come marching in. This is the visual I want you to see, like the ants come marching down. <laughs> they come in and what the ants are is automatic negative thoughts. So automatic negative thoughts show up is what ants stands for. So we've all been there, right? We think, we even think that it's a much bigger deal than it is. And this is what happens. I got a um, an email the other day from someone who bought my first course, Hair Color Simplified, she's not in the membership and she writes to me all the time, you know, like, like we're BFFs and I'm her personal coach, but I always have time for everyone. So I answered and she said, you know, I did this to my hair and then I did this and then this happened. So then I did this 
And then I did this, like, whoa, 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 whoa. So I said, what do you want from me? Do you want to know why this disaster happened? Do you want to know all the things that went wrong? Or do you want to know how? Is it the why or the how? Is it why did it happen? Or is it how the heck do I get myself out of this? Because that's what we do. We totally panic. And we reach for, most times, the strongest tool in our arsenal because we did not take the time to do the virtual consultation to see the depth of the correction that we have coming in, to see the amount of time that we have to reserve on our appointment book. And it's this snowball effect of disaster because now we're panicked, we're sweating, we're looking at our watch. And for me, we're departmentalized. So if I start lagging behind in the day, then the whole salon, it's like a total snowball effect where everything is a mess because my client who's getting corrective color needs to be to that stylist for a cut and style by a certain time. So for me now with the experience that I have, it's like, no, you know the amount of time that you have and you know the amount of time that you need. So that's when you have to have a confident conversation and say, because I under, underestimated the depth of this project and you are scheduled with one of the girls for a haircut. Today we can do X, Y, Z, and then we're going to have you come back for the next step. Or, you know, let's just prep your hair, condition your hair, get you in great shape, and let's have you reschedule. Depending on how it was booked. If you only have a half hour, forget it. Don't even start. Because what's going to happen is by you rushing it, and half-assing it, for lack of a better word, for you just going, oh, I'm just going to throw this on or I'm just going to do this. Anytime you think you're taking a shortcut and you're trying to save time, you create a mess and it ends up being a much bigger correction. Trust me, I've been doing this a long time and I've been very guilty of it myself, you know, where I'm just like, oh yeah, no problem. And I've had girls come and work with me where I've trained them and I watch them talking to a client and it's, you know, 730 and we close at, you know, 830. And the colorist is like, oh, yeah, we can do that. And, da, da, da. and I'm like, I'm giving her the no, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. So then, then she's like, no, no, I'm good. I'm like, I'm telling you, you're not good. And I'm not staying like I need to get home to my kids. This is years ago. My kids were little lunches, homework, all that. And she's like, no, I'm good. I'll, I'll lock up. I'm fine. And of course, I get the sobbing phone call. Three hours later, when she was still there, she created a mess and set off the burglar alarm trying to lock up because she was so shaky and stressed that it was such a disaster. And I'm like, I tried to save you from that. So for me, someone who has more experience and knowing what was coming, it's so hard to watch. But I was like, I washed my hands of it. Like I told her how I felt. I told her it was a bad idea. She did it anyway. And guess what? She'll never do it again. So she had to go through that herself. She was looking at me as, oh, yeah, she just wants to get out of here. She's older. She doesn't get it. I'm fabulous. You know, the, the confidence is always, most times outweighs the, the skill um, when someone's newer. And I was like, you know what? She has to learn for herself. So know your limitations, but use your products and your tools to help you work less hard and more controlled. So always respect the hair fiber. Um, yes, there's Olaplex. Yes, there's all these bond builders that can keep you from totally trashing and melting off the hair. But there's other things that we do other than straight up lightening that compromise the hair that aren't necessary. When we reach for the bomb versus the firecracker. And when I say bomb, I'm referring to bleach. Bleach is a very volatile, harsh chemical, and it needs to be respected. I can't tell you how many times I travel and teach in people's salons and I have somebody raise their hand and say, I'm a blonding expert. I specialize in double processes. I put 40 volume and powder bleach on their scalp. I poke a couple holes in a plastic cap and I pop them under a hot dryer for 40 minutes. And I'm like, how have you not had an ambulance coming to your salon to carry that person out on a stretcher? Like you can kill someone by doing that. That's how strong that bleaches and putting them under heat is a whole other story. So I want to walk you through some of my favorite corrective tools that are in my arsenal at all times. I can't live without them. And I am a brand free educator. So when I tell you this first product, don't think that I work for that brand. Don't feel like I'm trying to sell you something. I'm trying to share with you after 35 years 
what I know works well and what is my toolbox. What are the things that I like to, to use and that serve me well? And there's others, trust me, these aren't the only things. These are just my things. So the first thing that I want to recommend is a porosity equalizer. So something that sometimes we don't take into consideration is that hair has a story. We talked last session about the zones of the head. So this brand new hair that I was supposed to get colored today um, is healthy, brand new, has no damage, has no issues whatsoever other than the heat of the scalp. So you have to be careful with that. And then zone two is usually pretty healthy. It hasn't been through too much, but from like here down, there is a story. There is a story. Um, and it can be black is underneath, um, blonde was done after the black, or there's vivid somewhere under there, under the brown, like there's a story on those ends. So what happens is the porosity of each part of the strand. If you were to pull a hair out of my length hair, if I pulled one of these long hairs and stretched it out and laid it on a foil and did something to each section of the hair and really looked under a microscope, you would see that each section was affected differently because of porosity, because of elasticity, because of um, texture and density. You know, how thick is that strand? How coarse is that strand? Pardon me. So this is something that sometimes we don't think about. So I like to have a porosity spray. There's different types. Some, um, you know, you can put in as a, almost like a styling lotion, like it's a liquid. I prefer a spray because I like to work quick and I can just mist it on the hair just as an a, a emergency, just in case it never hurts. You can't overuse this. Nothing negative is going to happen. If you didn't need it, it's not going to give you an adverse um, result. It's, it's a great tool. So this is Kenra Porosity Equalizing Spray. A lot of times when I go to refresh my stock, I can't get it. So that tells me that other people like it as much as I do. So that's number one. So it evens out the porosity, especially when you're glazing, because especially if you you'll if you know me and you follow me, you know I always say glazing. I think glazing I'm saying is a lazy um, technique because the hair is just all bunched up in the sink. You can't see all the different shades and tones and porosities and all that. I like to bring the client back to the chair and I like to really dry it almost bone dry to see all that's going on. Um, so that evens it out for glazing where everything takes more evenly when I use that spray. So the second thing is Malibu crystal gel. And I'm embarrassed to say that I would say maybe Four years ago, I started using Malibu products. I always thought of Malibu products as swimmers, swimmers hair, you know, get the chlorine out, sell it to the kids when they do swim team in the summer to keep their hair from having that weird slick feeling that the chlorine gives them. I did not know all the corrective tools that they had, and I never really looked into it, to be honest. So I was teaching at a show. It was in... Texas. And it was a smaller show. And I walked around the floor of the show and saw their booth. And then they were having a class. And I sat in on the class because I was early for my class. And I didn't want to leave their class to go to my class because it was so interesting. They were talking about how the minerals build up on the hair and it's equivalent to like having little rocks on your hair. When you think about that, trying to color over these little pebbles and rocks, of course, it's not going to be even or adhere to the hair. So super interesting information. Their website um, has a ton of information, tons of videos. I was fortunate to have to make a relationship with one of their educators. So I bring her in to my Hair Color Secrets Insider coaching calls like once a quarter to answer everybody's questions about Malibu because there's always a million questions and she's great. So we have a lot of videos in the membership about Malibu, best practices, how to do it properly, what to use for what. Um, but the crystal gel is like their Mac daddy, you know, wonder product where it really removes everything from the hair. And I wanted to share, first of all, share what it looks like. It's these little packets. Um, so you just follow the directions on the packet. You mix it with water and um, apply it to the hair. You put it under heat, takes all the extra buildup off, any kind of hairspray buildup, product buildup, all of that um, off of the hair. So I had a situa corrective situation. Um, my cousin's niece, um, she she's one of those young college kids that will sit in anyone's chair if it's cheap. 
Um, and this is what she ended up with. And she was crying when she called me. She had, she's a beautiful natural level seven and normally has beautiful highlights. So they attempted to give her an all over blonding service and didn't leave it on long enough. The product probably wasn't strong enough and it was very orange. So then they panicked and had the trickle of sweat down their back that we talked about earlier and the hot flash and the oh crap. And they reacted and put on a very ash toner on top of the orange, trying to mask the orange, which is a whole other class, trying to mask orange. Um, and this is how she turned out. So she's crying. She's like, oh my God. I was like, don't worry about it. I've got you. It's going to be much simpler than you think. So that's how she started. I actually, I wasn't working in a salon and she was here visiting her mom. So I went to their house and I was trying to save the day as easily as possible because I wasn't in a salon and it was during COVID. So we were all masked up. It was awful. And I had her apply the crystal gel herself the night before, because I knew with her long hair, just that part of the process was going to take an hour and a half to two hours between having her sit under heat for the full 45 minutes. And then sometimes when you're um, brushing it out, it can be super tangly after it because you've removed all the minerals and the hair is like, oh, um, cuticles wide open, all that. So I had her do it the night before and you're going to be shocked. So this is what she looked like when she started. I gave her the crystal gel and this is what we got to just with the crystal gel. That's no color, no bleach, no nothing. That was just crystal gel, 45 minutes and didn't even have, you know, a regular hood dryer. I had her put a diffuser on a dryer and just keep going like this the whole time. Her and her mom just kept moving the dryer around so that the heat could activate the crystal gel. So this is what I'm saying when I say let your tools do the heavy lifting. That crystal gel did all that lifting of that weird toner on top and removed that mask of, oh my gosh, where do I even start? There was like blue pieces and green pieces and orange pieces. But look at how much better in one step. Yeah, she still has, you can see like some banding down below, you know, through there. There's a lot of stuff going on, but it's almost a clean palette for me to work on. So I was able to get her from this to this in only an hour and a half because she did that treatment the night before. Now, I'm not saying have your clients take it home and do it. This was a different circumstance. The reason I'm sharing it is because I want you to see that you don't have to be an expert colorist to be able to use this tool and you shouldn't be afraid of it. It's not scary. It's vitamin C. It's not bleach based. So I think people hesitate, myself included. When I first started using, it, I was like, oh, I'm afraid, you know, I don't know what it's going to do. Is it going to shift the base, all that? No, it's just going to pull all that surface stuff off of there. And what I think happened, because I asked the Malibu educator that I'm friendly with, I said, why did it take so much of that color off? Normally you would use like CPR or quick fix or something like that to remove actual color molecules. I didn't think the crystal gel would remove that much. And she said, what happens is um, Hannah, the girl with the hair probably already had mineral buildup on her hair. So the glaze was on top of the mineral buildup. So when the gels went in, it pulled everything off. So learn something new every day. So then I was able to just go in and do highlights, lowlights, and a little bit of a root shadow, hour and a half, her hair's down to here, and she was thrilled. Loved the end result, you know, looked like her old self. And now over time, this was like last year, over time, we're starting to just allow her natural to come in and go for a more natural look because she's in college. She should not have ever attempted to globally lighten her hair. Shame on that colors for doing that. Um, so I talked a little bit about Quick Fix just now, which is another Malibu product. And Quick Fix should always be in your drawer next to your sink because if you, we've all had that panic moment with a glaze where we're seeing the base of the glaze coming through. You know, they're laying back in the sink, you're looking at it and you're like, oh crap, I have to get this off. You rinse the hair and it doesn't look the way that you want it to. It's either to blue or to, you know, greenish or khaki or whatever, whatever overtone there is, the um, quick fix is the same little powder. It's these little um, packets 
and it's crystals inside and you literally, the client's lying back. You don't say a word. You just put it in your palm and you go like this and you start bringing it through the hair and you kind of mush it around. You keep looking at it. You rinse it, you shampoo. It's fine. It, it immediately rinses out that overtoning. Now, don't try to use it on, you know, someone who did a box color level two color. Um, it's not meant for that. It's meant for that quick oops of oops, overtoned, oops, you know, a little too red, oops, a little, you know, it just kind of cleans off that canvas and allows you to do the next step. So the key to um, quick fix is it's meant to be used within 24 hours of the color that was the oops. So if a client comes to you on a Wednesday and you can't get her back to you until the following Thursday, do not use the quick fix. It won't do anything. That's when you want to use the next product, which is your CPR. So I have a chart here that I'm going to share, but it's going to be hard to see, but I'm sharing it because you can go on Malibu's website or you can Google Malibu C tools for color correction. And I'll also put this into the Facebook group, but this is a chart that's so user-friendly. You see like yes and no under each thing, and it'll tell you what can quick fix do, what can CPR do, and what do you need DDL direct dye lifter for? So all three of those products are corrective tools, but all three of them have their place in our toolbox. And a lot of times people use the wrong product for the wrong situation, and then they blame the product. So take the time to learn the limitations of it. A lot of times I'll see on forums, people will have really wild, funky, vivid colors. And they're like, I use CPR and it didn't do anything. I used crystal gel. And I'm like, that's, it's a direct dye. There's a different chart. There's negative and positive charges with direct dyes and different direct dyes have a different charge. So if you don't know which direct dye you're working with and what you need to remove it, and you go in with a tool that's not meant for it, of course, you're going to be frustrated. And again, most people will grab bleach. And sometimes with direct dye, bleach just makes it a lighter version of itself. It'll make a teal blue into a palest light blue, or it'll turn it sometimes a greeny color. Um, so DDL is a bleach based product meant for vivid removal of a certain type. So these are the things that come with experience and come with having a coach like me to reach out to and say, help, she has this on her hair. Which one of these things did, have you found success with? Which should I use? And then I tell you what my experience has been or one of the Malibu educators. So easy products to use once you understand them. Um, so I talked about CPR and then there's a newer product. It's not brand new, but new-ish called Disruptor. And what this does is it supercharges the um, CPR and the other products by disrupting the color molecules first. So the instructions on the bottle will tell you to, you know, apply this disruptor, take, you know, shampoo it out and then apply your CPR. But a tip that we got from the Malibu educator was, even though the instructions say that, leave it in, you know, process it fully, the disruptor, leave it in the hair, apply the CPR right over top of it, and you're going to get a much bigger shift in color removal. So that's a nice tip and it's a great product. Um, DDL. Okay, so henna. If you've ever had a client, I'm sure some of you don't even know what henna is because it hasn't been in fashion for a very long time. When I was in beauty school, that was a big thing because clients were like, I don't really want to color my hair. I want to stay all natural. And the only true natural hair color in real life is henna. You know, these hair color companies that say that they're organic and they have, they're chemical free and ammonia free and this free, not true, impossible. You cannot lighten hair. You cannot change hair from brown to blonde without using some sort of chemical. It is not organic. It is not natural by any means. Um, so if a client calls you and says, I only have henna on my hair and I want some highlights, proceed with caution. Henna is really hard to play with as far as shifting into another sort of color without first removing it. So I, disclaimer, have never done this because I haven't had anybody with henna in a lot of years, but I got this from Mags Cavanaugh from her Ask Mags page for henna removal. And anytime one of my members has a henna, I send them this and say, follow these directions because 
Mags has a chemistry background. I do not. So um, it's saying to use 70% isopropyl alcohol for five minutes, then mineral or castor oil applied directly over the alcohol, placed under the dryer for 45 minutes, take out, manipulate the hair, apply a clarifying shampoo, work into the hair, rinse in hot water, continue to apply shampoo and rinse until gone. So I will also post that in our Facebook group as well. So good to know. So sometimes we want that knee jerk reaction. We want to just put something over top of something else. So our um, instinct is, oh no, am I frozen? Pam says I'm frozen. Tell me if I'm frozen so I don't keep talking to myself. We did have a tornado warning, so I'm hoping that the uh, internet's cooperating. No, I'm not frozen. Okay, good. Thanks, Johnny. Um, what was I talking about? So, oh, so for Hannah, your instinct could be, well, she wants darker anyway, so I'll just put color over top of it. But sometimes the makeup of what Hannah does to the hair versus what traditional hair color does is not a good fit and it can react poorly. So sometimes it's best to remove one thing before you go in with the other. Um, so speaking of removing, sometimes, and I hate when this happens because it's a very stressful procedure, no matter how you go about it, sometimes you just have to remove color. If we get a really brassy orange result, which is the number one issue that we talked about in session one in Let's Kick Brass, Sometimes we just can't get the hair where we want it to be and it sits in that orange zone. And most times they're trying to be either a lighter cooler brown or a light cool blonde. So either way, orange is never our friend. So there's a difference in corrective color between orange that is the undertone found in natural hair and orange that was applied artificially in hair color. So if someone, say, has a copper red hair color applied to their hair versus that underlying pigment, we're going to treat that differently in a corrective situation because most times, unless you're going much deeper in level, it's really tough to get that orange out. So when we do have to remove color, make sure you have a minimum of three hours on that book with no interruptions. And sometimes you have to use good old bleach with a low volume developer. Sometimes you can add some shampoo in there. I'm not a fan of the, you know, old school bleach wash, but there's times when you just absolutely need to go in and get everything off. So I will usually attempt first with some sort of color removal product. Um, I feel like it's a little bit more controlled than straight up bleach, but not always. Um, I miss Pravana so much. That was the best color removal. I took a client. She had all over brown, artificially colored hair on her gray. And then she had a couple highlights in the front with vivids. So she had like fuchsia and blue highlights in the front and then all over dark that she had been doing for years. And of course, when the silver gray, the Jack Martin trend came she said, I just want to go gray. I'm a grandmom now. I want to embrace it. And I was like, oh, great. This is going to be awesome. So I was fairly new to using the Pravana. This was years ago. And I was like, I'm going to give a shot because if I can just get everything off there, her gray underneath is beautiful. I don't even really have to do too much once I get that color off there. So what was nice about the Pravana is it never did anything to the natural hair. It only took whatever was artificial off. So her gray was grown into probably about here. And then from here all the way down, including the vivids, I was able to get everything off in one Pravana treatment, just got it all off. And it took it to like that weird, um, it had some warmth in it. It almost, it didn't look like it was bleached, but it just looked void of color, but it, it was not going to be pretty on its own. But then I was able to go in and double glaze with all my silvers. And it was, I was so proud of that head. So I started to stock up on the Pravana color removal because I had heard rumors that it was being discontinued. And I and Jack Martin, I think, beat me to it because he says he bought every box that he could because that's one of his secrets to all these complicated um, removals of dark 
ladies with dark hair going gray. It was such a great product. I'm not sure why it was discontinued, but my, my deodorant that I love was discontinued. My lipstick was discontinued. Um, something else just this week. I was like, seriously? Oh, my sunscreen that I loved, my lip sunscreen discontinued. It's my absolute favorite. I bought every tube that I could get my hands on and now I can't get my hands on anymore. So I either have really, really bad taste or the chemicals and the things that I like are going to kill me <laughs> because they all get discontinued. So I'm not really sure what happened to Bravana, but the closest that I found to replacing it is the Rusk Eliminate color remover. But the Rusk Eliminate, I, I haven't used it in a few years, but I do think that it will affect the natural hair. So you just want to be careful to keep it just on the colored hair. Um, but that's one of my, um, let me see if I have a picture of that. I think I do. That's one of the other things that is usually in my toolbox. So that's the Rusk Eliminate. So it's for um, oxidative hair color removal. Notice it says oxidative. It doesn't say vivids. So you want to follow the instructions and use it to within the limitations that it's meant for. And then this is a new product that is awesome. Um, when I made my, uh, my confession the other day about the big oops that I did, this really saved my butt because her lightener was in the hair in the back for so long that I didn't want to stand there with a towel and a, um, a, a squirt bottle because water will actually continue the action. Water is alkaline. So we're adding, you know, fuel to the bleach when we use just water. So this Deox, you can mix up and I think you can keep it. I think you put it in your refrigerator and you can keep it for up to a week. So you can mix up one batch of this and have it at your back bar and just squirt it. When you rinse out the lightener and you want to fully stop the action, you just put that on and it'll stop it from processing and you're not going to get any further damage. So that is a, a great tool that everyone needs in their toolbox. And then we've all had those clients that, you know, they may have gone a little longer, which especially now during COVID, they've gone longer in between their last visit. And this is what happens. Your tried and true formula that you've always done on her, now she becomes almost like a corrective color because the new growth, that first, you know, half inch of hair is going to take beautifully to the traditional formula. But this part out here that's further away from her head is behaving like a virgin retouch where it's further away from the scalp and it needs a little more strength to lighten to um, where you are in the regrowth. So I'm sure that everyone on here can relate to seeing that during COVID for the first time because most of our clients are pretty good about coming in on the cycle that we have them on, whether it be four weeks, five weeks, whatever the cycle is, if we stick to that and we measure with a scale and we measure properly and we're not lazy about just willy nilly squirt, squirt and not paying attention um, and we're careful with our application, you can in fact create bands in the hair, even if they aren't super grown out by when you're applying with your brush, you're doing this, you're smearing, 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 versus tapping, 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 tapping. So that's a technique that I share in my membership as far as application, because you don't realize that a level five applied too far out over and over and over again becomes a level four and a three. It'll just keep getting deeper because color over color over color, you're going to get that inky effect. So then you're like, oh crap, what do I do now? She has this band, but she's a brunette. So I, she doesn't want highlights. So how am I going to get this band out? So it becomes this big stressor because you can't hide it, right? She pulls her hair back and a ponytail. She sees that inky ring around the rosy. That's a nightmare. We also see banding around the hairline. This area around the face on women over 40 years old is different than the rest of the hair because of the changes in our estrogen. When we start having... The hot flashes this morning. I was in a, in a zip up hoodie in Florida. My husband's like, what the heck is going on? It was the tornado thing made it really dark and windy and very Wizard of oz looking out. So I immediately felt cold, even though I'm inside and it's 80 degrees out. I felt like I should have a sweatshirt on. It's so mental. So I was sitting there all bundled up. And then of course, you know, 
the flash comes and I'm whipping off the sweatshirt, I'm turning the fan on and I'm cranking up the air and shutting all the um, shades down and trying to make it, you know, really cool in here. So women, when they are over 40, if you'll notice this hair around the face tends to suck up the color, you know, we, we rinse them and we're like, what is that about? That's what it's about. So I tend to, um, if I see that happen ever, or I really try to prevent it when I, excuse me, when I am formulating, I'll do a whole level lighter around the hairline just to prevent it. But if I didn't do that, or if they came to me from somewhere else where they didn't have that done, or if I switched their color line and one was more opaque and one was a little more translucent and I have a band, something that I learned that's a great tip that is super simple is using either a uh, cream demi-permanent color that's in a tube that's higher in alkalinity or a some permanent lines have a clear in a tube. I know chromatics is one of them. Um, I learned this from Tracy Cunningham and then um, learned it again. I'm trying to think of who else did this technique. I think it was probably Beth Minardi. So Beth Minardi and Tracy Cunningham. So because the banding is usually further out than the retouch, you want to apply your typical retouch in the regular color. And then right where the banding is, you want to go through with this clear with developer and the clear has alkalinity. So the alkalinity is going to want to try and lift a little bit. So it's a very subtle shift. We're not talking, you know, my natural to my blonde, like it's not bleach. It's just shifting some of that inkiness. So you just want to apply it carefully just to the banding and you want to leave that on the whole time that the retouch is on. Um, and you'll get that slight little shift and it'll work through there and the band will disappear. Um, so I'm going to get a million questions about that because I shared that in my membership. And one of my members was like, oh, you know, she she's going she's going a little bit lighter at the root, but I, I put the clear on. So it's all good. And I was like clear in a tube. Right. And she's like, no, Shades EQ clear. I'm like, no, Shades EQ is not alkaline. It's not going to do anything to that band. So it's specifically an alkaline clear. Um, to be safe, I would say get the chromatics clear because that's permanent and it's going to have the most amount of oomph. Um, so speaking of acidic and alkaline and porosity and pH, something that I don't have in my notes here, but that I did want to share is taking the time after a color service. This is another thing that I'm embarrassed. I only started doing probably the last 10 years of my hair color career. Um, you know, we tend to spend a lot of our time on application techniques, formulation, trends, um, you know, the how to get somebody to a certain color. And we don't spend enough time talking to people who understand the uh, chemistry behind the condition of the hair. A lot of times you'll, you'll hear somebody say, oh, she needs more moisture than protein. And you're like, well, how do I know which one she needs? And I was guilty of that as well. Um, you just go in and shampoo and slap on a conditioner and send them on their way. But they're, especially with the Malibu products, in their instructions, they say shampoo, especially the CPR. The CPR instructions are shampoo three times with undue goo. And people say, ah, it's a marketing thing. They just want you to buy their shampoo. No. Undue goo is a pH of 9.5. The pH of hair is 4.5 to 5.5. So a 9.5 is going to do a lot more in clarifying and pulling off that excess color we're trying to get off than a 4.5 to 5.5. So it's intentional. It's on purpose. It's, this is not a place that you say we learn the rules and then break them. You need that higher pH in that clarifying shampoo. So same goes, we talked last night, or not last night, last session of what goes up must come down. So when you're coloring hair, you're raising the pH and the alkalinity. Everything is higher and more swollen and more raw, trying to get all that color to do what it's supposed to do. And then if we just shampoo them with regular shampoo, they're left open where the hair is going to just, put, the color is going to push off as soon as they shampoo their hair. 
So maybe 10 years ago, I learned all about, you know, bringing back down the pH, sealing down the color, protecting it. We started doing special treatments right after color. And oh my gosh, our business exploded because clients talk and they would go into work and their friends would all be complaining about their fading color. I used to see commercials for, you know, the box color and they're like, no more fade, no more this, no more that. And I'm just like, what is this fading they're talking about? Like, I don't have it. Like my clients come in looking great other than, you know, the telltale sign that they need to be touched up, but it's taking the time to um, do these extra little things. So this is my um, pet thing that I've used for years and I'm not a total Wella salon. I don't work for Wella, but this is called Wella service and the smell the clients go crazy for. So they actually look forward to that part of the service. And if we forget to do it, like if we have a new shampoo assistant and they skip that step, our clients will say, did you do the service? And then they look at them like, what the heck's a service? And they're like, that stuff that smells really good. I'm terrible at um, retailing. I've never been good at it. It's a horrible thing. Like I just, I don't, I don't try hard enough, I guess. I know how to do it. I just don't try hard enough. Um, so this is the one product that every single client that we use it on for the first time asks to purchase because they love the smell. And I'm like, of course, because we can't sell it to them because its job is to bring down and lower the pH of what's going on in the hair. So it's not to be used as a regular conditioner at home. It's meant to be used as an after color. That's why it's called service. So of course, Murphy's Law, they want to buy it because it smells good. So I have to come up with something else that smells like that. But since we started using that and we started using these other custom made conditioning treatments for after color, our clients noticed a huge difference. And the treatments that we use, um, I was just sharing with someone in a forum today. They were like, what are you getting your clients for Christmas? And I'm like, I don't know why we feel like we need to give our clients anything for Christmas. Um, give them good service. Give them your attention. Give them, you know, a hug when they come, if you, if you can, with COVID. Um, but we don't necessarily need to give them a gift, but there is a sense of loyalty, a sense of appreciation. So what we decided to do is got smart about it in a marketing perspective. So for the holidays, instead of, you know, one year I did those little bath bombs and I was like packaging them up and doing all these things. And I'm like, the clients probably never even use it or they probably re-gifted it the next thing they went to. So I was like, what can, what can be, you know, appreciate it and really awesome for the client, but also awesome for our business. And I looked at our numbers and I saw that we weren't ready for a price increase because we had just done one, but, you know, things are skyrocketing right now with cost of gloves, cost of foil, all that. So we're like, we need an upsell opportunity, especially in the slower months, October and January for us, for some reason, are the slowest times. I don't know why October, January totally makes sense because everybody rushes to get in for the holidays and then they're done, you know, they're good to go. Um, but we did, we printed out on a um, small piece of paper, you know, I had Bryn, Bryn's great with the computer. So she goes on Canva and she made it look pretty. And it was like, you know, happy holidays. Cause we have a lot of Jewish clients. We have all different people. Not everybody celebrates Christmas. Happy holidays from, you know, from Lux. Um, our, our gift to you is a um, intense customized conditioning treatment um, with any service in the month of January. So we're basically inviting them to make a January appointment where they might not have, they might have stretched it into February. Otherwise, it's a treatment that we charge $25 for. So that's a very generous gift. It's a $25 gift. Now, as you know, it doesn't cost us $25 to perform that service. It's done right at the bowl, right after their color. It's a five minute service, but we give an amazing massage. You know, we go in and we do this around their forehead and we do this and we get behind their ears and we rub their neck and they're just like, oh, and every single person, I mean, maybe two or three didn't for some reason, but probably 90% of the people that we gave this gift to every single month from the time they got that gift in January for the next three years asked for that conditioning treatment after every color service. So that's a win. 
right? That's a holiday gift and a huge win for your business because now we're adding on $25 to every color service because they saw the difference in what that treatment did. We did the service to bring down the pH. Then we did this other conditioning treatment on top to seal everything in. And the intensity of this treatment is meant to only be done after a color service because it lasts through to their next touch up. So they don't even have to condition or doing anything on their own at home. So now we don't have to push products on them. You know, they have their hair in great condition from this insulin only treatment that they're addicted to us because we do it and we know what the special sauce is and they loved it. So be intentional with your gifts. I can't tell you how many people get all caught up in having a party for their anniversary. Guys, I've been there. I've, owned, I've had two salons and I've had a salon for 33 years. So trust me, I've done the customer appreciation party where you bring everybody together or you try. Clients don't want to party with you. They don't want to come to your salon when they're not getting their hair done. I'm sorry if that sounds awful, but it's true. And my husband would try to tell me. He says, you are going to spend all this money. You're away from your kids. You're trying to schmooze and take care of your clients. They don't want it. Give them $10 off their service the next time they come in. That they will notice and appreciate. And he was right because we did it all. We had it catered. We put the tent out. We extended everything. We have this big party atmosphere. That's all ego. And it's all like, oh, we want our picture taken in the newspaper. Clients don't care. They want that $25 treatment that they're going to see the difference in their hair immediately. And instant gratification they didn't have to do anything special. They were coming anyway to the salon. So they get to use it when they're there. They get that wonderful massage. And then the extra, extra special bonus is they go home and tell their family how fabulous their massage was. They go into the office and tell their coworkers how fabulous the massage is. And then we have referrals and new and repeat business from it. It is such an overall win. So today I was, you know, on a forum and people are like, we're giving out nail files with our salon name on it. We're giving out combs. We're giving out those pocket calendars. Hello, 1980. Who uses a pocket calendar? Everybody uses the calendar on their phone now. Nobody wants that little calendar with Betty's Beauty Boutique on it with the lady with a bouffant. Like that's over. So stop doing what you've always done and do something different. Learn something different. Um, you know, that's part of my membership is it's not just me coaching you on hair color. It's me sharing with you these marketing ideas. Our coaching call is November 8th for the members. And I did a poll in our group. I saw a lot of people asking formulation questions. So I'm like, guys, do you want us to do more, you know, formulation examples of this is her before, this is her after, and this is how we got her there? Or do you want how to get new clients, how to survive the holiday rush, how to work smarter, not harder for the holidays? Everybody voted for the holiday thing. So I would have done the formula thing thinking that that was of value, but I check in and ask the members what they want. So all the coaching calls are customized to what people want at that moment. I don't have an agenda where I have all my coaching calls for the year planned out. And it's like all about me and what I want to teach. No. When I start to see a trend in the questions, not only do I make the coaching call based on those questions, but I will bring in another expert. We've had Joe Blackwell as a guest. We've had Beth Minardi. We've had Sonia Dove. Um, who else did we have? We had um, Amy Spencer from Malibu. We've had Joe Santi. Um, my gosh, going blank. So many. But anybody that you would want to learn anything from, if I have a relationship with them, I'm more than happy to bring them into the coaching call for another perspective because you can't know everything and you can't be great at everything. So I do my best to provide everything that I possibly can, but I am not too proud to bring in backup when something's out of my wheelhouse. Um, name of conditioner after service is Wella Service, it's called. Can you put a sample of the card? Is that, are you talking about for the conditioning treatment? I'm going to do that in your coaching call, Tammy. So you'll get that. I got you covered, girl. Um, so I'm just checking in the comments. It's about five. Of, I'm so proud of myself. I have been on time every night during this boot camp, and that never happens. So I'm finally refining my 
my chats and I know how to get right to the point and not talk too much, even though I talk a lot. Um, so if there are no questions, this is the finale of the actual boot camp. But every one of you are invited to a masterclass. So I asked that you pick one and not sign up for both. And I also, I have a lot of insiders on here. I have Tammy, I have Tracy, I have Johnny, I think Sylvia's on here. So the masterclass, if you are an insider, of course, you're always welcome. But the content in this masterclass, you have all had. You guys had this and that's how you became insiders. So it's the foiling faux pas. You've seen it. It's in your library. You're good to go. You don't have to come to the masterclass. I love that you guys want to support me and you've all signed up for it, but you really don't, you know, especially Carolyn from Hawaii was like, I'm trying to change my schedule. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is for new people who don't know me, who don't know anything about the membership. And I want them to know more about what services I offer and how it all works. So if you're already a member, please do not worry. You're going to get everything plus more in your coaching call. Um, you don't need to come to the masterclass. It's just going to be a rerun for you. Um, and you have access to everything that I'm going to talk about. It's, it's the same class, both nights. Um, both masterclasses are the same. That's why I say sign up for one because it's not like, oh, I want to pick the best one. It's the same exact topic. I just offer it twice. So that if somebody can't make the one, they make the other and you have to be there live. I do not do replays for the masterclass because the masterclass is when you can ask me the, the most questions and it's very interactive and it's not going to be the same on a replay. Um, can you please tell us which airport? Sonia, um, you can fly into either Clearwater or Tampa. A lot of the airlines don't fly into Clearwater, but if your airline does, that's closest to the retreat. Masterclass is usually an hour of content and then the questions come flying in so you can stay as long as you want with the questions, but it's a minimum of an hour and I never go over usually 90 minutes. It's usually like around 75 minutes, um, the masterclass. And it starts at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, there's one on the first and one on the third. So if you have any questions left after these three sessions, please be sure to come to the masterclass. If you cannot make either masterclass, don't stress about it. You are going to be getting emails inviting you to Hair Color Secrets Insider membership. So you're not going to be left out if you don't come to the masterclass. But I am giving a really good gift um, for those that come to the masterclass. Stay till the end and engage and ask questions. There's going to be a good gift at the end. So if you're on the fence, um, I say show up. So thank you for all of you that are brand new to me. This has been a great you know, time to connect with you and show you a little bit about what I am about. Um, I hope that you'll keep in touch. I do coffee and colorful conversation every single Wednesday. I've only missed two in seven years, and that was for two funerals. Good excuse. Um, so I am there 10 a.m. Eastern every single um Wednesday, and it's on my expert color solutions page. It's not here. Um, let me see if I can now. Well, let me comment. So it's expert color solutions, Facebook page. It's an open page. You don't have to join or be approved or anything. You can just show up. All of the coffee chats remain on the page. So you can binge on them anytime. There's tons of great information on there. I also have a YouTube channel. I would so love if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's just my name, Elaine Travis. And I also have a podcast called Ask the Color Expert. So I would also love for you to subscribe and leave a review on the podcast. It's available on iTunes, Spotify, Anchor, all the places that you would listen to any other podcast. I am there. And it's called the Ask the Color Expert podcast. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for being here continue to keep this group alive and help each other out. You can post things in here, questions that you have and other people that attended the boot camp can answer you. Um, so don't let this be the end. I've enjoyed spending this time with you and I look so forward to seeing all of you at one of the wonderful masterclasses. So thanks so much and have a great night.